things have changed. You see something you like? Double tap. You see something you dislike? Tweet about it. You're in a relationship? Update your relationship status. Want to browse the news? Do it online. Want to find out your credit score? Do it online with a trusted agency. Want to trade stocks? Use an app. Interested in buying some new clothes? Do some online shopping. Want to track your calories? Use an app. Having health problems? Google it. Having relationship problems? Google it. Thinking of going outside? Take your phone with you. What could possibly go wrong? The depths of this industry, the, the really darkest corners, have yet to be exposed to any light whatsoever. This data is going to be taken from you and it is going to be sold. Every location that you visit physically can be recorded. This valuable data is now a commodity that is traded amongst a handful of companies. Here's how it works. Your name, your age, your height, your weight, where you live, where you work, your family, your friends, your likes, your dislikes, your phone number, your email, your health conditions, your buying habits, your credit score, your political beliefs, your religious beliefs, who you text. These are all examples of data points, little bits of information. And those little bits of information are very valuable things. Why? I hear you ask. And valuable to who? Well, advertisers would be a good start. With a large amount of data, an advertiser would know exactly who they should target and how they should target in order to make you buy. Well, thank goodness they don't have access to your data then, right? Wrong, they do have access to your data and it's not your data anymore. Welcome to the world of data brokers, a $200 billion industry based on selling your personal information to other companies. Right now, you're probably imagining some tech giants like Google or Facebook, but that's not who I'm talking about. As far as we know, those companies don't sell your data. No, I'm talking about the others. I'm talking about more than 4,000 companies in the US alone, faceless companies, companies that you've probably never heard of, companies that are operating in the shadows with very few rules gathering all your personal data without you knowing. Information about your health, your buying habits, the restaurants you eat at, the supermarkets that you buy from, then negotiating that very data with other companies for a hefty profit in the millions, all behind your back. I don't know about you guys, but I want a piece of that pie. If we're going to start profiting off of people's information, we're going to have to start collecting that data. Sounds quite difficult, doesn't it? But it's a lot easier than you would think. Nowadays, people give out their information willingly and without realizing that this data can be extracted and sold. Begin with public information, things that you can find on someone's social media pages. There was nothing to hack. People were going to provide their own pictures, their own information. The pages that they like, the places that they've visited, relationship statuses, hobbies, friends lists. Look at property records and land registries, court records birth certificates, voter registration information, bankruptcy records. All of these things can be publicly accessed. But that's not enough data. Nah, we're gonna need more than that. So go ahead and find companies who are willing to sell their customers data. Yep, your favorite retail store that offered you those loyalty cards. They've got all the information on what you've been purchasing, when you've been purchasing it, and how often you've been purchasing. And guess what? It's all up for sale. Retailers are finding out that they have a, a secondary source of income, which is that the data about their customers is probably just about as valuable, maybe even more so, than the actual product or service that they're selling to the individual. Go ahead and buy data from vehicle licensing agencies, the ones that have your name, address, and other personal information. DMVs are making millions dollars selling drivers personal information create free websites apps and other services that are designed to look ordinary but hide their actual intention what web visitors don't realize is that take five's real business is collecting and selling the information put trackers on these websites and apps that allow you to see things like a user's location and their contact list those cookies that you see on websites, they have a sweet name, don't they? And you probably have no idea what they do, but a lot of these cookies are tracking your online behavior, the websites you visited, the news that you've read, the online purchases that you've made. This is an entire list of vendors which a website is willing to hand out your information to. But is it even legal, you're asking? 
course it is. These people have agreed to handing over their information. They're the ones who clicked accept and agree on the website pop-ups which requested the use of their personal data. They're the ones who left their social media pages public. They're the ones who liked those Facebook pages or posted about their thoughts and interests. These are new times we're living in, remember? And although these people don't know what they've actually been signing up for, We've still got their digital signature. Any information you get, as much information as you can get, all of these data points are little pieces of gold, and the more data that you collect, the better set you're going to be for the next stage of this process. You see, data isn't just random bits of information. What data is truly, at its core, is human behavior. And with the data that you've gathered as a broker, it's time to start making your product. All this data needs to be sorted, aggregated. From all these people that we've taken data from, we need to start creating profiles. At the heart of this industry, we don't care whether a person likes this brand or that brand, or whether they prefer baseball or basketball, or whether they shop at Walmart or Morrison's. What we're looking for is patterns and with all this data that we've gathered we can start to identify patterns in how you behave and what your overall personality is like by looking at just a few of your likes on facebook we can accurately predict what your political affiliations are by looking at just your purchase history we can guess how old you are whether you're looking to lose weight and whether you're a parent by looking at your frequent locations we can determine where you live where you work what restaurants you like to visit the most whose houses you visit the most by looking at your credit score we can assess what level of income you're at and how much debt you're in by looking at your contact list we can determine who your closest friends are how often you call them and whether or not you've fallen out with them based on the frequency of those calls by looking at your internet history, we can determine any health-related concerns you have, your religious affiliations, what your interests are, whether you're planning to go abroad or not, what you're thinking about purchasing. All of these predictions allow us to create a profile for each individual on our data sets. A profile that can detail exactly who you are as a person, how you think, and how likely you are to behave. That is our product, a well-wrapped package filled with an individual's behavioral patterns. And once we've packaged all this data into profiles, audiences, lists, it's time to start selling. But who do you sell this information to, you're probably wondering. And the answer is damn near close to whoever wants it. Right now, your main customers are going to be marketing companies. If we had a list of people who are health conscious, which is something you can determine by a person's buying decision, then there are a handful of companies that will want to get their hands on that list. Gyms, personal trainers, health-based restaurants, food subscription boxes, which are based around healthy eating, online programs for fitness, etc., etc. Those people would love to find out who's interested in getting fit because the more targeted an advertiser's campaign is, the more return they can see on their advertising spend and that's where you come in and sell them those lists of people that fit the bill but is that really where it stops of course not do you know what else those profiles can determine about you they can determine the riskiness of your lifestyle and that is something insurance companies would love to get their hands on recently purchased a motorcycle then get ready for that information to be flagged up by a health insurance company and for you to begin paying higher premiums for that health insurance. Banks would also love to get their hands on your information. From your search history, they can see whether you have a history of credit card purchases on luxury items. And from there, they can determine whether to give you higher or lower interest rates on any loans that you take out. What about people search websites? Websites that store personal information about people with which for a fee, you can access that information. They'd love to gather data on a person's name, address, family members and whatnot. And what about governments? Well, governments would love to know your exact location, especially if you're a person of interest to them. Or what about other data brokers? Yeah, data brokers sell to other data brokers. It's not as clear cut as scraping data and selling it off to other companies. This entire industry is a web of data brokers selling to other data brokers who sell to companies that sell to other data brokers with prices marked up based on the information that these data brokers are selling. And right now, the average email is calculated to be worth about $89 to a brand over time. One can only imagine how much money information like a person's political affiliations, their buying decisions, or their health conditions are worth to other data brokers and companies. But it's hard to fix a price on it. This industry is built in the shadows with word of mouth deals and private marketplaces being the only spots that you can buy this information your information 
200 billion dollar industry that is built up from using your information and yet with all that being said there's probably one huge question that you have right now a question that you have probably been asking since the start of this video chances are if you were born into a world of surveillance technology and the internet hearing about how your data is passed on like this probably isn't going to bother you as much as you may want it to and you're not alone in your apathy there's a very common sentiment which is i have nothing to hide therefore nothing to fear you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs if you aren't doing anything wrong you have nothing to worry about and so the industry of data brokering poses a genuine moral dilemma if your information is being sold so that you can use various websites apps or services for free does it really matter? After all, data can be used to track down criminals. We have an algorithm that we're using that will identify a sort of risk factor for each area. It can be used to predict epidemics and treat diseases and improve treatments. It can be used for businesses to improve their service or the quality of the products that they present to you. But what if that data got into the wrong hands? What if a data broker or a company sold your information to an individual without knowing their real intentions? What if an authoritative government took that information and used it against citizens that were openly against them. Would you care then? Or would it be too late? Right now, less than half of the data broker companies in the US let you see what information they have on you. There are literally services where you have to pay in order to stop other companies from using and selling your information. Your data isn't really yours anymore. So is it already too late? I started this video off trying to expose this industry and after all my research I only left feeling more confused because at the end of the day so many of the services and apps and websites that we use that are free rely on the collection or selling of your data in order to stay profitable. Two plus two equals fish. So would you want to pay a subscription fee for Instagram or Twitter or Google Maps if it meant that none of these companies were collecting your data? And for some of you that hassle would be worth it. But for me personally, I'm still on the fence and I don't know. One thing I can say though is there needs to be more regulation. Things like the GDPR were a step in the right direction, but even regulations like these have loopholes and sometimes exist for the sole purpose of extracting money from a company rather than protecting your data and privacy. As a whole, the data industry is really interesting and worth researching if you wanna know how your data is being collected and used. And as with everything, I think the more educated you can become on the subject, the more closer you can become to finding the right solution for it. Thank you so much for watching. This video was all about data and privacy, which is why it's sponsored by NordVPN. Just kidding, I don't think this channel is big enough for that yet. Which on that note, if you're watching this right now, you made it to the end, which is awesome. So let me know in the comments down below, I will respond. If you enjoyed the video, please do be sure to smash the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button and let me know down below in the comments. And if you like these sorts of documentary style videos on business, finance, and life in general, be sure to hit the subscribe button, turn all your notifications on, check out some of my my other videos too it takes me a really long time to edit these things so your support is genuinely really appreciated but with all that being said i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day salute